Okay, so let's move on to the next topic then, uh, is how to get a good cell phone photo. Yeah. Why don't people just get a cell phone and take all their photos? <laughs> well, because the cell phone has limitations. I mean, it. you said it earlier though, the best, the best camera is the one you have with you. I think that's a Chase Jarvis quote. And I mean, I take a lot of pictures on this, not any that I would sell or give to a client. So what, do you, what do you have for a phone? I have the iPhone 11 Pro. So before this year, this was the top of the line um, one, but it has the three lenses. So that was why I was interested because I can do the super wide and then I can do the normal and then I can zoom in a little bit. Um, so it gives me some creative options. I just ordered my husband a uh one of these and he's got like an iphone 5 or something so he's gonna he's gonna have some fun with that um but uh yeah you know there's been some times when i've had a somebody take a behind the scenes photo while i'm taking like a professional photo and i'm like wait a minute how did you get so much sky like mine didn't expose for the sky very well and but there's i've heard somebody say it that there is so much um, artificial intelligence going on now in these phones that, you know, if you've ever taken a photo at night and it like takes a bunch of different photos and then it's finding the sharp points and it's putting it together. And it's like, I don't think that cell phones will ever put me out of business because there's so much more to photography than just having equipment. There's, you know, knowing the light and the location and the expression and the composition. Composition's like everything. And so, yes, you can take pictures with your cell phone, but you don't have creative control over your exposure very much. Um, and you don't have the flexibility of different lenses and choosing different apertures. I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, the cell phone has replaced the point and shoot camera. You know, we right. used to all have these little, you know, purse sized point and shoot cameras. And, and this is better than those now, pretty much. And so that's the challenge though with horses is what we've already talked about is cell phones are wide angle lenses. And so I'm sure if you've ever, you know, taken a selfie with your horse, let me find one and share my screen. Um, Their nose looks huge. Yeah, and, and it's just, it's totally disproportionate it's cute and i think everyone needs to keep doing it but like here's a picture of me and my horse fritzy on election day you know and it's not too bad but i mean her head's shouldn't shouldn't her nose isn't quite that big you know <laughs> so um <laughs> it's it's tricky um let me go to my cell phone pictures here and i can you've seen this one so you've seen what that proportion is like so this is my beautiful um solid paint mare fritzy um she is i call her my hashtag supermodel horse um because she poses so nicely for the camera she actually pays for herself in um the licensing i'm able to do of images that i take of her but here you can really see the difference this was taken with the normal you know the normal lens of the cell phone camera and she's facing me and here I was in the portrait mode, which is a little more of a zoomed in uh, mode on the cell phone. And she's in parallel to me. So she doesn't, it doesn't show that distortion as much when they're in parallel to you. That's a huge tip. Isn't that? I know. Yep. It's like, it's, it's just, it's the tip. Like if you want a good picture, turn them to the side. Don't face them towards yep. you. Yes. And here's Fritzy again in the, a nice winter scene on my farm. These are totally unedited. I just pulled them from my photo library. But the thing I want to illustrate here is this was the same lens on using the same lens on the cell phone, but she's not as close to me. So the further away the horse is in the scene, the more proportional they're going to look. Yeah, I see it. Her head yeah. is not as big as what it seems in the first one. Right. So let me see if I have any other examples. Like this is another, I was hoping to get a, a closer up, a, you know, a more proportional picture pulled of her and, and didn't, I ran out of time, but this is my other horse, my quarter horse, 27 year old quarter horse, Mayor Maggie Sue. Wow. You know, and facing the camera, I'm shooting up, which I think makes it worse too. Um, but this is her and her pretty, Not it's not that pretty anymore. <laughs> with a uh, mid-weight mid blanket that I got for her. Um, 
You know, here's another really good example again of Fritzy where she's facing toward me and then she turns to the side. Wow. Just, Interesting. Yeah, big, big difference in the proportion. The other thing I wanted to say is that when you're photographing any horses, the horse by themselves, um, they're almost always going to look shinier and prettier if you have the sun behind you. Um, but when you're doing selfies, it's painful to look into the sun. And so here I was riding with my friend Ingrid. This was not that long ago. We had just a beautiful like 70 degree day in November. And I was like, oh, this looks terrible. Okay, let's turn around and put the light behind us. And we look a lot happier. So that's a little tip for lighting is, is you know, it's fine to photograph the horse with the sun behind you, but not, not so good people because people can't look into the sun very well. Unless yeah. the sun's straight overhead, then it's not going to make a difference where you, where you aim the camera. But when it gets to be late in the day, this is, this is the um, better angle. And um, last words, Shelly? I don't know. Everybody stay well and go out and have fun taking pictures. That's what this is really all about is having fun and making art. Yes. Now go use this stuff and go hug your yes. horse and take pictures. Yes, go hug your horse. <laughs> Thanks, Nell. Bye. Bye-bye.